Well, good morning, everybody. It's Neil Foley from the Business Growth Club here. Uh, we're on a beautiful, is it Wednesday? It's a beautiful Wednesday morning. Is it, is it Wednesday? Yes, I think it's Wednesday. Uh, and I'm here, I'm very lucky today to be with uh, Tom Bull, that some of you may know. Um, and we're just going to explore his background, as a, which is a language background. But you've got two companies, Tom. So, so what are the names of the, your, your two companies? Oh, hi, Neil. Hello. Um, so, t- yeah, two businesses. Uh, Integro Languages Group, yep. essentially, is currently a grouping of two small niche language businesses. Okay. One's called Integro, yep. all on its own, and the other is called Lexica. I'm okay, and what's yeah. the difference between the two? So, Integro is a niche specialist marketing translation company. Um, right. We work with brands who want to grow internationally. In a nutshell. Oh right, okay. Um, that is specifically brands, so people who uh, perhaps aren't really competing on price in the same yep. way as others are, um, who are really, really focused on driving the reputation and name of their business um, with real strong global credibility. So these are UK based, predominantly but not exclusively. So okay. we've got clients in Canada, we have clients throughout Europe, um, but about eighty percent of our client base is here in the UK. So how does a, a, a little old company in Norwich end up dealing with all these international companies and, and the rest of it? How, do, how on earth does that happen? Well, hopefully in, in the same way that we help our clients to grow, which is by showing that we've done a pretty good job. Yeah. Um, so I've been in the languages industry for about 12 years. Which uh, way should we go? We're one, oh, sorry. That time, oh, yeah. Uh, let's go. We're sorry. wandering around Norwich Cathedral, would you believe it? <laughs> Yeah, so you've been in languages about 12 years. That's right, yes. And uh, I studied international business and French at university. Okay. Made quite a lot of contacts through doing that um, and have developed quite a strong personal network, I suppose, in that bit of the world. And And was that in university in the UK? No, well, yes, it was. I studied university here with two years spent in France at university as well. Okay. And it was that that gave you some of the, the international contacts? It was a good start. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, and then I just enjoy networking and enjoy kind of getting to know people. Um, and I'm very passionate about what we do. Right, so okay. as a company, I think we do something that does stand out quite yep. a bit. Um, and the clients we've worked with, I started the business in 2007. I still have, we still have many of those clients that we really? kind of found 2007, 2008 in those early days. And I think we're still providing really strong, good value for them. And were they small companies then, or were they, was it a leap of faith for some of these companies? So they were companies at the beginning of a journey, which is what right. we're all about, really. Okay. Um, so Integro is very much about accompanying people from the start of their international growth uh, through the early days of working out how they're going to do it and what they're going to do abroad, yep. what their messaging really is, what they want to say about themselves, and then adapting that nicely and correctly for foreign markets. So are you merely, I say merely, that sounds oh, like what a lovely word. Dreadful, <laughs> that is a dreadful word. But are you just providing the language, far if from you it. like? Far from it. So we, 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 we don't call ourselves a translation company. Right, because that's we're, relatively we're, easy if you've got the skills. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, that, that's a functional role, yes. you know, the translation. Yeah. Um, and there are billions of different ways of getting yeah. translation. What we are is a language support agency, specifically to the marketing function of a business. Yeah, so it, it's not just a, as you said, it's a functional role just mm. to translate from one language to another. Yeah, that's really not what we're about at all anymore. The Tied up within the word marketing, you've got a lot of different things. So there's all sorts of strategic communications that brands use. They'll use targeted mail shots. They'll use posts. They'll oh, use okay. different forms of media advertising. Within all of that, though, at the heart of it, you have a USP. Yeah. You have a message, and you should be able to sum up in one paragraph, maybe, what makes you special, yep. why you're different, and why you think people should choose you over someone else. That's really where you have to start, yes. your international growth journey. If you haven't virtually got that right and got that nailed down in the UK, that's where your first bit of thinking really needs to be. But then you need to start at the heart of who you are and what you do. Yeah. And we encourage companies to start in the right place, go back to the drawing board a little bit, and consider who they're going to be when growing in Spain or the Netherlands. Right, okay. For example. And culturally it has so to be different, I guess. It's got to be bang on. How do they um, know that then? How do they get that? Inf- do, they, do they have to be on the ground there? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So our first rule of thumb is that we will never, ever work with a linguist. So we'll 
pair your company up essentially with a linguist team yep. who dig deeply into what you do, yep. but must be people who have grown up speaking that language, are surrounded by that language every day, right. and live in the country that you're talking about. Oh, okay. Second to that, you'll have what essentially I call imposters. Yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a completely different world. So when translating a brand or a set of brand messages, whatever it is, for Italian, for example, yep. not only do you need to understand, obviously, everything you can about the business in their source language, but you need to know with every single word you're using, does that possibly correlate with something in the political sphere in that country of at course, the moment? Yep. Is there something else on telly with a similar word involved? Yep. Was there something in the newspapers yesterday that someone might read this sentence today yep. and be reminded yep. of that perhaps wouldn't help? Yep. So it's very, very important to be not only well versed in the language that's yes. that's an absolute minimum for just participation in the industry but to really understand yes what everything means and whatever what else is out and to there have grown and ev- up there and everything yeah. else you said so you you, you understand the culture yeah otherwise yeah. that's a good well, point that's isn't it? just what that's that, that's a minimum yeah and, is, so and did you half. learn that from the, from the word go or was, uh, no. has this evolved no. and through yeah. through painful yeah, experiences and well, experience, I mean, some, some painful, <laughs> some less painful, I suppose. Yeah. But, uh, no, that's been a quite a lengthy learning process. Yeah. Because um, it makes, it's like all the, I mean, it's like all the great ideas, aren't they? When you hear them, you think, well, it makes perfect sense. You yeah. know, why doesn't everybody do that? <laughs> quite. And, yeah. of course, it isn't quite as simple as that, is it? Nothing ever is, uh, no, is it? Nothing, no, nothing ever is. Um, so, in, in the way that a lot of businesses grow, we started out doing whatever we could do. Yeah. Um, early days of being an entrepreneur, you kind of say yes to absolutely anything that comes yes, along and then work out how do. to do it. Yep. Um, and then over time, you realise what you're really good at and really yes. passionate about and what really works for you and the areas where you give great results consistently. And we stopped doing anything else, really. Right. Um, so okay. we, we, I knew that the language industry really needs niche players and yep. not generalists. There are enough of those, and frankly, they don't really give yep. good enough results in my eyes um, the future is not we specialise in all sorts of translation which is another way of saying you just specialise in nothing yes. um, <laughs> it's actually really digging in and finding your niche and your little place and, and yes. living there yeah and, and if you because the other side of the business as I understood it was, mm-hmm. was about helping people with medical translations in terms of in That's the right. emergency field or uh, really. <laughs> yeah. how did that come More about or less. Um, how did that come about it's a good question Primarily through the necessity of one particular client. Really? Okay. Um, so, I mean, just to sum that up, Lexica is far more niche even still. It's yes. really very, very specific. It provides emergency medical translations for the insurance industry and the insurance yep. claims industry specifically. Um, if you imagine a situation where you've travelled to Korea and had a very yep. nasty accident somewhere, your insurance company has quite a difficult job on yeah. their hands sorting out your emergency urgent care making decisions about whether or not yep. you were doing something you weren't allowed to do on the conditions yep. of their policy etc etc they need information and need to be able to make decisions really really fast and you depend on it and your family depend yes. on it and your life might depend on it yep. and we make that possible basically through right. Lexica we provide 24 hour a day emergency medical translations for situations right. like that Wow. so very different run with a different set of staff and a different set of processes okay. and a whole different, whole different world of linguists. Um, but equally, it's a very complex but important niche yeah. position. Yeah, real niche, it. isn't it? Yes. And, wh- and one that you're expanding? Very much so, very much so. So we've seen about a 100% growth in turnover in the last 18 months wow. within that business. Um, and, I and it's, it's not like a brand a snowball, new business. Isn't it, isn't it's it? been about for about nine years we've been running that company. Wow. Um, and it's, it's snowballing nicely because rather like with Integro, we've grown purely on reputation. Yeah. We have a zero advertising spend. Um, really? And we, I've never spent money on advertising, ever. We have lots and lots of staff who work at these companies who very kindly move on to a new employer in the same industry. And, and they say, stay in the same niche. With Lexica. Oh, um, oh, so it's the only way we've grown from from word of mouth recommendation. So, th- I mean, that's an interesting point in terms of from from a business growth club viewpoint. We're always talking about you've got to look after what well, you should. It should be an obvious thing, but it isn't. Mm-hmm. Is look after people or look after your existing customers, oh. and and actually that's proven in your case, isn't it? Because obviously they value yeah. what you deliver, and when they move on, 
Without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. so it's a slow fantastic. burn. It's taken us yeah. nine years to really grow the business okay. that way, but there's no other way that I really would want to do it. Well, there isn't, um, and there is no overnight success, is there? You no. sometimes hear that and people say, but that's just because suddenly you're on your, they're on your radar. But yeah. most people, you put in the legwork. You have to, don't you? There, is, there isn't really much substitute, is there? Absolutely. I, I mean, I often think that you'll see people who... I'll watch a tennis final at Wimbledon and they'll yes. say, oh, well, this guy has trained 15 years to one day get yeah. lucky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not lucky at all. He's trained no. 15 years. No, no. Um, no, that's very true, isn't it? So what I, the things I know you for, Tom, is... I mean, I don't know anything about languages or I'm not in your field in any way, shape or form, but you do your social media very different from most people, don't you? I, I am... N- n- not, not intentionally so. <laughs> oh, thank really? You. Well, only in that I, I just make it up. <laughs> so we don't really well, have a particularly um, intentional strategy, but that's intentional, if you see what I mean. Yes. I, don't, I like the fact it's um, conversational. <laughs> yeah. it's, it, you know it's Tom. Right. That's the bit for me is when you're commenting or coming up with something humorous uh-huh. or whatever. Well, try. Try. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I was being polite. Uh, but the, the, they, but you, you know it's Tom. Right. And I think that's... I think that's really refreshing. And how does that work for you? Well, I, I think authenticity is kind of everything nowadays. Yes. And even that's almost cliche now already. But I think one of the reasons entrepreneurs start their own businesses is they don't really want to be told what to do. They have a reasonably strong... I have a reasonably strong sense of what I do and don't like and what I want to be and what I want to resist being. Yep. Um, and what's the point of social media otherwise, really? It's just a way of talking to people we, we, we are having a lovely chat in the sun yeah. on a wednesday morning it's kind of what it's all about isn't it and social media should just be an extension of this kind of process and you it's don't certainly not about message. peddling all your bullshit no. And, and no no you don't do that do you, no, you and, and that's and that's what's oh well, i mean it's a lesson for us all because that's what comes over is you, you, you think actually i do know tom <laughs> even if i don't know you you think actually i do know the guy i've got a sense of what he's about and the rest of it that's nice uh, no you. i think you do it really well and you and you do a lot on twitter don't you a little bit. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Um, I, I very quite recently come round to Twitter. Have you? I resisted Twitter for years. Right. Um, I'm quite a slow adopter of technologies, generally, okay. actually. Um, I'm a slow adopter of a lot of things, because I like to overanalyze and think things through Do very you? carefully before getting involved with most stuff. But uh, I'm quite a fan of Twitter now, actually, yeah. Yeah. I enjoy it. And what sort of responses do you get from people? Uh, it's, it's, is it mixed? it's all very friendly, all very polite. Is it? it's, 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 it's a nice place. I, I, um, you've got to be careful what you go on to, I think, yes. on Twitter, haven't you? There's an awful lot of political extremism. And as with any yeah. kind of social media, it, it radicalises people's positions yeah. far more quickly than they ever intended, probably. Um, yes, it, it is a it dangerous be, medium it can, it can be... Some, it's just somewhere to stay in the middle. Stay friendly, stay yeah, cordial, I think and that's... enjoy a bit of banter. That's yeah. it is, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it works really well. And do you run the companies on your own then, Tom? I mean, is uh, well, no. what's your journey no, no, no. from 2007 till now? Is it oh, just so, you? 2007, so 2007, I was starting all on my own as a little language consultant, uh, self-employed person. Yep. I initially started out getting involved with some businesses in Norfolk who were selling investment property in France. Okay. Um, but none of them spoke French. <laughs> they were, I know, quite. Yes, that's the sort of thing I They do. were getting yeah. themselves into all sorts of I kind of complications. Uh, so we were. I was able to contribute a fair bit to their business. Yep. It was my first dalliance in the assistance industry. I'd already worked in the insurance industry, but um, the assistance industry is the emergency translations oh, okay. service yep. that I yep. spoke to you about. Um, I was involved with the startup of an assistance company um, back in the end of 2007. Yep. Um, and then over time, I realised that there was a great need for the whole service beyond just a single language and a single person as a consultant, but to yes. create an actual business that could really add value and take companies forward. Yeah. Prior to that, I'd worked in London, France, and a little bit of time in Spain, all with businesses who were trying to grow internationally right. and generally finding the whole thing very difficult. Yeah. Because it is, and it certainly was then, and it still is a very difficult, challenging thing oh, to I'm try sure. and do. It's fraught with risk. Yep. We're going to be a building going on up here. Shall we? Oh, yeah, we'll get turn about, yes, because it's going to get noisy. Yeah, so a lot of risk. Yeah, a lot of risk, a lot of cost. Yeah. An awful lot of false starts or, um, or failure. Right. All of these businesses were either employing for languages and getting the wrong people as a result. Yeah. Or finding that they were wasting money on language services that didn't give them what they want. 
or just finding the whole thing very difficult, confusing, and getting a bit lost with it all. Yeah. And it was, it was clear to me even then, so pre-university, that there was something that could be done. Okay. Um, this was back in 99, 2000, yeah. when the idea of the euro was on the table. Were we going to yes, join yes, it? Were yes, we not? Yes. The European Union was very exciting back then. Yes, they were um, days. Indeed. And that's when I wrote the first business plan, actually, 1999. Really? Yes. So you'd pre-university or do you... Do pre, this was pre-university. I went to university a little late. Um, and I wrote it all up, thought it all looked very nice, showed it to my boss at the time, who said, yeah, it looks all right. And then I chickened out and put it in a drawer and came oh. back to it four or six years later. Wow. Yeah. And so now within the business, I mean, I, I'm intrigued as to whether you've managed to do this on your own. I know you've got staff. I, haven't, I have staff indeed. And no, I've had mentors along the way. Okay. Um, who, I, have the, who have the mentors been that have helped? Um, so predominantly there was a chap called Mark Overton who was a mentor to me very early days. And also I gave him a small stake in the business when it was okay. started, um, which I, I later bought back. Yeah. Uh, he was very helpful in terms of was he a linguist? guidance. No, he wasn't, but he was quite an experienced local businessman. Right, okay. So he'd run several companies and was quite well connected in, in a number of areas that were very useful to me. How did you uh, come across him? Um, I don't even know, to be no. completely honest, anymore. Um, he did you just seems, like each other? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. He, I, I don't know if you'll have been there. You meet people and think, you know, I could work with you. Yeah, absolutely. Without a shadow absolutely. of a doubt. And yeah. um, even when I was quite young I, I thought yeah we'll, we'll work together yeah. that, that makes no sense and so did he um, you get a, a similar approach and a feel for similar goals yes um, one of the things actually I, I've learned over that time is, is it's not always ideal to work with people who are too similar to you uh, oh. especially as an entrepreneur <laughs> Um, because true. that whole I want to do what I want and I don't really want to be told what yeah, to do doesn't true. work when everyone feels the same way yep. um, so we're a funny breed I suppose no, there's a there's a, somebody I've got to know quite well, uh, uh, Derek, uh, who has been involved in twelve different startups, Goodness. all with a techie background. Right. All the, the the actual underlying product service works, and yet they, none of them have really succeeded. In fact, they've all folded. Oh, did, right. all, uh, all because of the personalities. Ah, right. Yes. Because it's, people it's, didn't. You know, I, yeah. I thought we were going this way, and you'll say we're going that right. way. And actually, the best collaboration I see is when people have different skill sets all together. A totally different mindset, because that's exactly what you want. Because somebody didn't say, actually, I'll just leave you to do that bit and just leave me to do this bit. Yeah, I entirely agree. And the, you can see it on many levels, really. Um, spreading your genetic kind of uh, landscape as wide as possible yes. is always wide. Always wide. Um, yeah. Within a business, you should have people from different areas bringing different angles and different ideas and contributing different things so how have you done that within the business then so we have um how have i done that i suppose by accident you you had to kiss a lot of frogs to find the right people in every walk of life i think um but now the team that we have has organically kind of found their place so i have two managers and they're very different to me okay um but we all get on but bring complementary skills to the yep. business and that's something that's had to happen over time we've we've been through a number of people and tried yes. people in those roles and finally had the right ones which and has really been critical to growth for both businesses or in separate no there is a separate manager for each one right okay. um the, the two businesses really do need different skills different yes. focuses um and different resources so they they have very little in common except for a parent company now right okay which is I, intentional yeah well yeah. I guess the assistance is it's that's full on immediate need it now that's right it's a 24 hours a day service that yeah. switches over to New Zealand to cover a night shift and really? it's technologically quite quite complex and different to wow. uh, and sort of 365 brands well. days a year completely yes absolutely 24 people still people still get into comas and accidents at, at, at Christmas unfortunately yeah crikey and did, if you're dealing with an insurance company which I, I guess they predominantly are. They are right? indeed, they're, yeah. So these are big players, aren't they? Yeah, some of them are, yeah. How do they feel dealing with a small niche player in, in little old Norwich? <laughs> it's a very good question, really. So um, it's probably still a barrier to us in terms of accessing the big ones. Is it? Um, which we're working towards because we're, we're growing in size and we're growing in credibility because we can point to other people like them that yep. we are working yep. with and, point, and demonstrate the value that yes. we're offering and, and the changes that we're bringing about with them. Um, most of our 
target market in that area actually is what you might call a mid strata where it's um, the, the in assistance specialist companies who are really our prime client um, more so than are, the insurers yeah they're so the insurers to outsource to, to an assistant in, indeed yeah not not, okay. not all of them not all no. of them but they're faster to react they're faster to make decisions and they're more forward thinking on the yep. whole at least at the moment um, so they've really embraced our message which is all about really really fast and really really secure delivery yep. of translation services um, as we touched on before translation is in many cases a functional role yes. but we want to point out the levels on which it's also vital yep. so you can make translations really really central and important to your business by building a message around it that, that's all about speed or delivery or uniqueness or specialness in some yes. way um, for the marketing clients that we work with we're not just providing the translation of words that could be performed by anyone. We're really digging into brands that, that value the perfect word in the perfect place. Right. And that, that's when it really, really matters. Yes. It's where your reputation really, really hangs on what you say. Mm. And for those companies, you can't just use any old translator. And there are no shortage of translators in the world. But no. you have to have the right person saying the right words and having given it the right process and thought patterns that mm. leads them to the right translation. Yeah, I mean, I'd never really thought about it, but I can imagine in a stressful medical situation, mm. and, and they're translating the written word, yep. presumably. That's right. Yep. So, are doctors overseas the same as doctors here? The handwriting. <laughs> they're all they're all completely illegible. Yes, yeah, very so, much so, so you've got a, you've so. got a you've got a yeah you've got to interpret yeah. the actual. Which is word. why it's not a job for just anyone. It isn't, is and it? And it's absolutely not a job for what I call the generalist translation market. You need a medical. You need, a medical, you need a medical background and know that that word isn't quite right as it looks. There's, there's, there's yeah. some other meaning. Um, so you need, you need a really, really strong understanding of the medical language of yeah. both your target language and your source language, as yes. we call them. So the two languages that you're working within. Um, you also need just a good understanding of people in the medical system. Yep. So what the names of drugs are, what the names of treatments are. Of course. Um, and they're different names in different countries, aren't they? Absolutely. And the whole process of working through the medical system in yes. a country is really, really important to what we do. So when you'll receive a document from a GP, we know what a GP is here, and we have our own idea of what a GP is, but a GP's role in France or Japan yep. is very, very different. Yep. And they have a totally different relationship with the medical system in those mm. countries. So for the same reasons that we've kind of alluded to before, within a marketing context you've got to have grown up in that country live in that country yes. and be surrounded by that language the same really applies to be a really good medical translator yeah it's all about we essentially cream off the kind of the top 10 yeah. percent or yeah. something or the top x percent of the supply chain yes. that's available and it does mean that we have to be a little bit more expensive yeah it does mean that we have to be a little bit more exclusive so we can't serve the entire market but we no. serve those that value quality um, and we're not ashamed of that so it's real niche stuff, isn't it? Very much. Because often you, yeah, you know, from a point. marketing viewpoint, yeah. Yeah, you, you get it. But so many people don't, do they, in terms of you shout at everybody and mm. nobody's listening, whereas yours is a very, very niche. Yeah. You probably know yeah. your targets that you, you want to work with. And there aren't many. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah, yeah there must be a finite number. I, could, I, could, I, could, I won't, but I could name them all no, right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, both strategies kind of work. Yes. It depends on what you want to do. If you're an e-commerce seller and you simply want to pedal products yeah. or drop ship products, just go mass market. That'll probably yep. work for you, and you can use Google for your translation. You don't need to bother people like me. Stick it yep. all on Amazon, nice and cheap. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, that's not my world. Really, no. that's not really what we do. Uh, we're at people. We're looking for people at completely the opposite end of the spectrum that yes. know that the right message to the right person at yep. the right time. Yeah, who yes. wants to listen to you and has asked to hear it. Yep. is the absolute holy grail. Really. Yeah, that's priceless, isn't it? Yeah. And you said at the beginning that you're you're, you're running two companies at the moment. <laughs> But you, you hope for more. So what, what, what's, what's next for Tom then? I can see there other um, similar but different niche positions within the translation industry really? that I'm very interested in. Um, some of which are a little bit left field, a little bit bonkers. Yep. Um, I think there are opportunities around supporting the arrivals of Asian and Chinese tourists, for yep. example, to the UK. That has seen huge growth and I still see an awful lot of literally just observing as I'm walking out on the street you yes. can see Chinese people who look completely lost and confused yes. about where they are they're using phones they're using phones to navigate and find their way around yes but we're not interacting with that enough so it would be very easy 
for a tourism proposition of some sort to start sharing yeah, that's great, better information, better direction, additional information on products, places, museums, yeah, etc. Yeah. Through QR codes technology. Mm. That's just a, a random example, but I, mm. I would like to basically see Integro diversify into further niche mm. Mm. positions, but always maintaining we won't do anything unless we absolutely know we can do it yeah if you can't nail it to not, ju- not, not just do it well but do it to a level of quality that will make us pretty much world unique um, that's where I set the bar I mentioned Derek to you earlier uh, need to introduce you to Derek uh, mm-hmm. Derek works for the Department for International Trade I heard his pop- podcast yeah, you, actually. Well, yeah Derek's a really yeah. cool he's a, he's a really interesting character very very uh, knowledgeable but you'd be pushing on an open door and you'd be amazed how much help is around from people like the DIT. They oh, absolutely. They tons of help. Though. They're so really the, good. Yeah, the DIT are uh, excellent with um, infrastructure help, yeah. strategical help. Um, I know on your podcast, Derek talked an awful lot about helping people to choose marketplaces and yes. to choose entrance strategies. And that's really, really great because it's the stuff that I get brought into talking about. Mm. But as a marketing translation specialist, it's not really in my world, no. if I'm completely honest. We work with so many people who are going along that journey. Yeah. Um, and they're important questions, but the answers are different to yes. everyone. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the DIT are absolutely brilliant. I'm a, yeah. big, I'm a, I'm a big supporter yeah, I'm a big of the DIT. Of I've, done, I've done a fair few kind of talks and, and okay. speaking events for them and things, um, but never met Derek, which is odd. Yeah, so, must do. Well, there's, there's actually a lot of them on the ground, uh, mm. which is, and you tend to find one that you like and get yeah. on with. And, and you we've had a lot of support it. from them ourselves as well. Yeah, well, yeah. which is good. Yeah. Uh, actually, most government agencies don't sort of get bigged up, do they? No. Uh, no. Cause, well, probably because most of them are rubbish. But, <laughs> but, but actually, the DIT is, is, is something different, I think. I think so, yeah. Well, they have the opportunity to be, certainly. Yeah, yeah. No, they certainly try. Well, we'll do the introduction to Derek. So what's next for Tom, then, over the next 12 months? The next 12 months, I think, really, are head down more of the same. Is it? We've just been through a pretty radical rebrand of both halves of the business. Um, we're really finding our voice. Uh, we've gone through, and it's completely over now, but a very introspective process of working out what really, really we want to bring. Why and this did is you start kind of, that? We started that because, as I kind of alluded to earlier, we, we were essentially a bit too generalist okay. in what we were doing. And some of the niche positions that I'm talking to you about now have just come from refining our offering slightly to a, a key market and politely walking away from some other fringe business that we were working with. So really now we know where we are, we know who we are, we know what we want to do, and the t- next 12 months is going to be about just getting on with it and growing um, and just getting better and better and better. I, I, I don't see growth... I don't know how this ties in with your philosophy, but I don't see growth as a marketing or sales activity. Mm-hmm. I see growth as a continuous improvement activity. Yes. So if we just get better, give better results, and can say cleverer stuff, we will grow. Just keep That's how down. I think we'll grow. No, I, well, I would, would 100% agree with you on that. It, it, it's, it's not about sales, is it? No, it, I don't it, think so. it, It's about... It's a bit like it's us as individuals. You hmm. want to be constantly learning and improving and trying different yeah. things and don't want to get stale do you no so there was nothing there wasn't there wasn't a key moment that made you think actually you know what we're being too generalist here there wasn't uh, there was a number of them i well, suppose i, I mean i just why you suddenly did this introspective thing um i think i always knew it was just the right thing for us okay. deep down um you cannot be everything to everyone it's quite all. brave and though it's silly because if, if you were running a successful it's, it's not as bra- anyway. it's not as brave as it sounds because but i suppose reading between the lines what happens is when you try you mess up Yes. Um, and we did mess up on a couple of occasions. Right. You know, okay. everyone everyone does. And when you try and do too much or do things you don't really know about, mm. you tend to look silly at the end yes. of the day. Um, pretending to be cleverer than you are is never a good idea. No. So no. Uh, do what you do well, where you can actually bring something to the world and forget the rest. Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. And I guess that the final bit I was going to say, Tom, which is a very unfair question. Like <laughs> okay. Just to, but if you... you Going back to when you wrote that business plan, when you were mm. a young man, before you went to university yep. in 99 or whenever it was, what advice would you give yourself now, if you, knowing what you know now, if you could uh. go back those 18, 19 years, what, what would you say? I actually, um, I feel I did the right thing by mm. just putting that business plan away in a mm. drawer. So have your ideas, take mm. them seriously, and at least, I gave, at least I credited myself enough with the guts to write the plan yep. and not just dismiss it as, oh, I can't do that. But it's okay to do things when you're ready and yep. don't let other people dictate the speed at which you grow huge lorry absolutely so don't let people dictate 
the speed at which you grow, your direction of travel, or what you really want to do. And there are no shortage of people who will try and tell you what to do <laughs> along the way. I have had, I mean, I don't think anyone could have prepared me for it, but over starting my own business, I've probably been meddled with in pretty much every way you possibly can be. And just stick to what you want to do and, and who you are and, and what makes you happy, I think that's really important yeah I think that's that's huge isn't it, it I mean it's a whole new topic in terms of you mm. know, what measures success in terms of quite often people think it's money yeah and, and actually no. it isn't money no, at all really is it money is a byproduct of yes. success and yes. happiness if you're doing something that you love money will come along it normally comes it's along doesn't it um, and my dad always told me as a kid if you want something enough you'll find the money don't even think about the money what we we'll concentrate on wanting it We've now got the lorry. Oh, this is awful. (laughs) (laughs) Who's now actually... A a massive lorry has just blocked out the sun completely. (laughs) Oh, what a shame. He's going to turn himself off. Turn his engine off. No, so success is... It's a whole different topic, isn't it? But your dad was right. It's Mm. it's not about the money. Um, And you see that in the world that I used to live in, in the city and things like that, where I worked in. Not in the city, but with people who did. In in that, everything there is about money. That's that's the measure. That's the measure of the the, the the person, if you like, or the measure of your worth. And, yeah, and, and of course, it, it's, of course, it never works because there's always somebody earning more money than you. There was a guy. I, I mean, I mentioned this a few days ago, and I probably shouldn't, but I will. Uh, how are you, Karen? Sorry, being interrupted by some random stranger. Uh, the the in the Times at the weekend there was uh, AstraZeneca boss. Yep. Uh, talking about how poorly paid he is and uh, clearly it, 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 it rankles with him right. you know the poor fellow's having to live on 9.7 million a year oh, it must be awful it must be awful yeah. for him. But, but and he's got that isn't he that's his you know <laughs> he, he thinks that's his label of success yeah. or whatever and Quite. yet everybody else reads it and says what, what, what a total moron because yeah. do I mean, you go you home and hug your kids yeah like, you, you're was, paying 45 million the pound income tax yeah. so you, you know you've got in your bank over 5 million a year yeah. and you're saying you're hard done by it. I mean, it's just weird isn't it yeah so it is about successes. It actually has to be from the inside, doesn't it? I completely agree, so. Yeah. I'm not financially wealthy, no. but I consider myself very rich. Yeah. Like I, 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 very I enjoy dip. my life, yeah. and You're I love soul. what I do, and I go to work with a smile on my face yeah. every day. Yeah, and you meet um, nice people around. Yeah. Well, it's been fascinating, and, uh, and I really appreciate your time, Tom. And, uh, and we'll do this again. Thank you, Neil. We get to the new level on the next business (laughs) side. And uh, for now, thanks very much, Tom, and goodbye. Cheers.